In my line of work, presenting the highest quality image is key. Start building your website today at squarespace.com. Use the offer code CARL to get a 10% discount. I'm Carl Taylor, and this is my Squarespace. So we're here at Fitz Lab, which is a professional laboratory uh, for photographic printing. Now, I'm with John Fitzgerald, who's the owner of this lab, and uh, we're gonna have a chat with him to find out a little bit more about why it's a good idea to use ProLabs for outputting some of your really high quality prints rather than trying to do them on your own, say, small inkjet printer at home. Now, John, you use a variety of different surfaces to print on here. We've got photographic paper, inkjet, art canvas, all sorts of things. What do you think are the main advantages of using a pro lab like yourself? I mean, you've got the consistency of color reproduction from the machines. You've got someone who knows how to handle machines um, and produce the best results. Yeah. We give, give, given the various situations that are sort of thrown at us. And we've got, we've got something going on on this machine here, outputting one of our um, pictures at the moment. Now, this is a, a very high quality inkjet printer itself, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's an 11 color machine and uh, produce, prints at 2880 DPI. Uh, which is um, about the highest quality you can get right. these days. So, uh, in principle, this is actually very sort of similar to a lot of the sort of sm small home inkjet that people is, will be yes. familiar with, but this is just a much higher quality version much, of it. And much bigger as well. It's, yes. it's also driven uh, driven by a rip rather than just being straight from a computer driver. Right. So it's got much better control over your finished quality. Okay. Um, the, color, the colors are much better. Yeah, I mean, it looks very vibrant. And we'll take a look at that picture when it comes out. So the other thing to point out is that the size of the stuff that you can get from a pro lab. I mean, there's one of uh, our pictures that you've made in the past for us. Yes, that's 44 um, inches by 192 inches. Yes. Yeah. Now, you're not going to get to make that sort of image on your own uh, home printer. Um, so that's why pro labs can offer a real benefit, uh, especially if you're trying to market your work or sell your work, is that you can produce this large scale stuff. Now, that one is also an inkjet, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, because it's produced, um, on, produced on this machine. On that same machine. Because that one actually looks very photo realistic. Um, yeah. Um, because one of the uh, one of the, the materials that is still my favourite is printing onto photographic paper, which was obviously the traditional way of doing it. But now that technology's moved on that it uses lasers and LEDs to basically paint the light onto it the does, photographic yeah. paper. You sort of moved away from exposing your negative through a light bulb to yeah. using, as you say, a laser or an LED to project the light onto the paper. Oh. So it's, it's still light exposed it's yep. just with a different light source right but eff it's effectively the material the photographic paper is still the same exactly the same right. yeah it's, it's been tweaked slightly to take account of the digital exposure as well yeah. from a tungsten exposure but it's the only real difference and, and what would you say was the preference these days do you think the inkjet or the photographic or does each have its own qualities the i mean the inkjet will give a will probably be a far truer color really uh, right. uh, because you're working with pure pure colors coming from the inks the photographic process you're working with sort of three color layers embedded into the emulsion so the red green and the blue and, and it has to sort of work with just those three mediums as to say this one has 11 colors so yeah. you've got nearly three uh, four times as many colors to play with. I've noticed that certainly some of the color spectrum reproduces better on inkjet yes, than yes. it does on photographic especially the greens yes. seem to come out more vibrant but then in saying that um, we produce a lot of our material as photographic prints which we then block mount and I, I still find there is something about the photographic mm -hmm. material that has this beauty about it that I don't think the inkjets always capture. No, I mean the, the photographic paper in my mind is still a very resilient paper and it's taken them a long time to get the paper where it is now. Inkjet's still a pretty new technology. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it has a presence of its own. And yeah. It just, just the, the nature of the surface of the, of the print material. I mean that's a pretty sort of close um, similarity, that's a photo satin paper, so it's a bit like the photo luster paper you get. In the, the finish of it. Print. 
just before we look at the photographic uh, prints, John, actually, um, we're just saying here that that orange looks incredibly vibrant. Yes. Um, you know, by comparison to say what might you, what you might get on a photographic print, um, is that the case? That orange is better. It is. The, the, the inkjet technologies have moved on so much in the last few years, and they it sort of we used to have black, cyan, magenta, and yellow wings, but now they're introducing greens and oranges as part of the ink set. Oh, so they, actually, those there separate is, colours are in there, there as well. In there to, to produce just the results you're seeing right. now. And what about the uh, the longevity, the archivalness of these pictures? Because there was always a, a question about how long these would last when they're displayed under normal lighting conditions. Certainly, certainly in the early days, um, they hadn't sort of formulated the paper ink combinations to work properly with each other. So people would print an inkjet on an ordinary piece of paper and it would be gone in a couple of weeks. Right. But now the papers are designed for particular inks and they haven't got a life of 100 to 200 years of it stored properly. Right. But that goes the same with everything. Right, and the photographic paper is exactly the same as well. Same, yeah. yeah, they've got very long uh, archival uh, process. Now, the other thing as well that I just want to point out for our subscribers and customers is that although these are using effectively a CMYK process on this with extra colors, you still output from RGB. It's still the best way. Yes. So for yeah. photographic printing, be it on inkjet or onto uh, the actual photo paper, um, supplying the image files in red, green, and blue in RGB is the best way. It is. I mean, RGB's got a far a wider range of colours than CMYK ever, ever will have, um, and it's going to it will convert it very nicely, especially in the looks, to to the proper colours. Right, and there is no uh, particular. Pro I mean, we work obviously in Adobe RGB ready for conversion to CMYK if necessary for some of our um, commercial customers. But when we're supplying a, an RGB file to you, or someone wants to supply an RGB file to a pro lab. Is there any preference for the colour working space, or is um, no? Well, a lot of a lot of labs will give you um, profiles which are specific to their printers if you want to be able to soft proof the image. Right, but this um, is something you would convert for the customer if necessary. We, we would, absolutely, we, we're we're very happy to receive uh, if it's inkjet files in Adobe nineteen ninety eight. If it's photographic, the sRGB profile. Yeah, and uh, the systems we got built into the laboratory here will convert will look after all the uh, color conversions and profile conversions right. depending on which machine they're going to run run to okay excellent so i think this one's almost finished doesn't it it is cool yeah let's have a look at have a look at that one back end of it. Now these are a little bit delicate aren't they when they're wet out of the printer? Yeah, they, they need a good 24 hours to harden off properly. So yeah. Really they should be laid down on a rack to, to dry till the following day. Right, just to, so the surface hardens off and yes. uh, is a, a little bit more protected. Being, being, being a wet process in effect, uh, sort of ink spraying on it, it, they do take a little while to, to dry off. Right, um, yeah. So if you, if, you, if you touch them now you're likely to damage the print permanently. Right. Yeah. Well, let's go and take a look at uh, some of the photographic material as well then, shall we? Okay. Where should we pop this one? Just over the top there? So, John, this is your Durst Theta, which yep. you use for your photographic printing. Yep. Now, you've done many, many prints for me over the years. Um, I mean, here's, here's a lovely one that's a photographic print that has then, then been framed. Um, you know, talking about the quality of photographic prints, I said I still love that beauty in the uh, photographic process. The detail is fantastic. I still think that the photographic process is one of my favourite. Maybe I'm a bit of a traditionalist, having you know done hand prints on the old normal analog enlargers, if you like. But this print came out of this machine here. Um, th this is the machine that uses light to paint onto paper, isn't it? It, it does. Yeah, it, it's got a series of LEDs. Of LEDs in there all sort of running through fibre optics to a, to a print head. And is that in here or...? Uh... It is, yeah, it works pretty much like a, an inkjet printer and then the head flies across the paper. Just in sprays. the same method as the one yeah, we're looking at, like but that. just using light. Just, it's, and... it, literally sprays, it literally sprays light onto the rolls of yeah. paper. I mean, it's quite a technical looking piece of kit, isn't it? All the uh, gubbins inside of there. Um, but essentially, that's painting with light onto the paper. 
Then it goes through the usual chemicals. Yes, dev, bleach fix, wash, and then it's dried. Yeah, and then, then we get a print that pops out on the other end here. And here's one that popped out a little bit earlier. And again, you can see that beautiful level of detail captured in uh, a true photographic print. Um, now, the difference here is the surface material. We've got no issues with... Actually, none at all. No, this, is, is, this is much more durable it's and... very resilient. I mean, if, you, if, if, we make a, if we drop something on it, we can just literally wash it under a warm tap and leave it to dry and it'll... And it'll be... Just like this again. Yeah. Because by its very nature, it's been through, it's been through a wet process. It's uh, been developed, bleached and washed. Yeah, and again, archival longevity. Absolutely. Good, good, hundred, good for a hundred years, years if it's displayed in the right conditions. So that's basically a little bit of a roundup of some of the materials, photographic paper, inkjet. Now you can also print with the inkjet onto different type of materials such as canvas and art paper for different textures and surface finishes. But uh, when you want to get high quality prints uh, that you want to display for exhibition purposes or for retail sales, um, then it is worth speaking to a pro lab uh, because they've got the expertise in uh, professionally producing large output put at very high quality. John, thanks very much for your time. Good to see you. That was great. Thank you. My passion is photography. Whether shooting for clients or teaching students, the excitement of great photography never gets old. Check out my website for free training, a complete range of courses and even photography workshops. Thank you for watching.